Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be here. Um, thanks for coming to this event. So my name is Pavel Subochinsky. I'm a professor in um, the uh, Department of Software Science at Italian University of Technology. And where should I stand? I think I'll stand behind so I've got a little bit more room. Uh, so this, this seminar's title is European Leadership in, in, in this area. And I really wanted to start by sort of taking a, a global view of the kind of research that's right now going into AI around the world. As we all know, it is a very hot topic. There's a lot of investment. There's a lot of research going on. Um, so as was already mentioned, um, private investment in AI capability is now in hundreds of billions of dollars in the US alone. Um, State-of-the-art systems right now, system systems, are really massive, so they have billions to trillions parameters. These are these neural networks that are being built at the moment. They are trained on terabytes of, of data um, and take petaflop days of compute. Um, so just the training costs um, for the latest models are sort of you know, over $10 million just in the power consumed for the training. So that just gives you the scale of the, 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 the kind of investment that's going on and how expensive it is to sort of operate at the state of the art. And moreover, even more depressingly, since around 2021, much of the research has gone dark, right? So if you look at sort of the publications, the scientific literature on the frontier models, they don't really give you very much, much specific information. Um, and, you know, this is because the... Okay, so I've got two microphones now. <laughs> um, so this is because these, these massive private companies have snapped up many of the world's top AI researchers, and obviously they want to protect the IP, they want to protect the investment, and they hope that this will pay off in, in the long term. So what should the European strategy in this case be, right? So it, the situation, I think, from a European perspective, I, I mean, I know we all like to be very optimistic and happy and talk about European excellence, but unfortunately, I think for Europe right now, the situation sort of at the cutting edge of AI is slightly depressing, right? So on this picture, you have where do top AI researchers come from? Where do top AI researchers work to, to today, right? So you can see that the USA is kind of snapping up the large majority of the talent. Um, and even though Europe produces top AI researchers, they tend to leave Europe, right? So we have a brain drain of the top quality experts. Um, in the, uh, in the field. And moreover, as I was mentioning on the, next, on the previous slide, just the, the sheer costs involved in building this, these frontier AI systems are beyond the pockets of any university. Um, okay, so should we be depressed and, and sort of just give up? Well, I, I don't think so. Um, I think it's a matter of um, harnessing where Europe has research strength. Okay, and I think there is, there is a lot of a lot to talk about, about uh, you know, where our research strengths can, can come to solve some really difficult problems in AI that might not be at the forefront of sort of where the private investment is going on in right now. And I think that's the future. So in particular, I think um, sort of like, let's say, the kinds of models that are being used that maybe um, Andres was talking about in particular that sort of, you know, startups are using are kind of, let's say, not the state of the art, not the most exciting things that, like ChatGPT, but maybe something like supervised learning for specific use cases, like, for example, using, um, you know, <clears throat> using uh, machine learning and vision to detect, uh, to help with, with quality control and things like this. Um, but, the, but I'm not going to focus so much on this point. I really want to focus on this idea of trustworthiness. Um, and in particular, as we sort of adapt AI components, how can you reason about these systems as a whole and how can we have any kind of um, confidence in the, in the correctness, in the um, security and the ethical deployment of these systems? So next I want to focus on two particular research agendas. Um, so one is something called AI 2050. So this is a, a $125 million dollar, a five-year investment by Eric and Wendy Schmidt. Eric Schmidt is the former CEO of Google. So it's an, it's an interesting kind of a research program um, that have, has identified 10 hard problems that the idea is that these things should be solved by the year 2050. 
Now, I don't want to go into too much detail for all of these because we, we have a limited amount of time, but let me just focus on the first four, which I think are, are particularly important to the, to the context of today's meeting. So the first one is the scientific and technological limitations to enable further progress and powerful transformational AI. And I think this is the, the really, you know, this is the understanding, you know, the latest engineering tricks that allow you, you know, allow you to, to just throw money at, at the training and, and, you know, buy up data so that you have the, the next level transformation in AI. This is where I think the large majority of the, these hundreds of billion dollars of investment are going to, right? They're paying for compute, they're paying for, you know, snapping up top talent around the world and building the, these, uh, these frontier models. On the other hand, I think sort of points two through to four are areas where Europe really has existing research strength and where we can improve, especially if we focus our minds on these kinds of problems. Um, and these are safety and security, robustness, performance, and Apple challenges that may cause harm or a trust of AI. So this is really about, about um, analyzing the, the trustworthiness aspects safety and control alignment and compatibility of increasingly powerful and capable AI systems and eventually AGI. So this is really about ethical deployment, ethical issues, and contributions to, by AI to humanity's greatest challenges and opportunities in health of life sciences, climate and science. science. So this is, this is really, you know, applying AI in various fields. Um, so I think this is, where, this is something where, where we have strength. This is something where I think XSTI um, is focusing on and in particular, this consortium of the, our four universities, of Taltec, Tartu, Radboud, and Technical University of Munich, I think we bring together, together we have the, the really exciting combination of scientific talent to, to make progress on these, on these difficult, uh, difficult problems. I want to just talk about one more research program that's, that's just starting in the UK. So, in the UK, there is a brand new research agency called ARIA, and it's, uh, it's modeled on, on DARPA, right? So the idea is to fund high risk, but potentially high reward projects. Um, and there's a brand new project starting pretty much right now. Um, I, I went to at the initial workshop that was um, at the end of last year, um, which was kind of a pre, pre rollout um, collecting ideas. And, and the idea is, is it's, it's called Safeguarded AI, co Constructing Safety by Design. So this is some kind of a you know, proto science of safety engineering for artificial intelligence. Um, so the UK government is investing 30 million pounds on this. Um, and, and the idea is, is that you really want to develop rigorous engineering safety me measures as expected for critical infrastructure um, and leverage frontier AI to help us to do this, right? So, sort of combine these kinds of European research strengths with some of these frontier models to, to um, ensure that AI systems only operate with, within agreed upon safety guardrails and specifications for a given application. <clears throat> so the vision is that at the end of the program, we aim to show a compelling proof of concept demonstration in at least one narrow domain where AI decision support tools or autonomous control systems can improve on both performance and robustness versus existing operations in the context where the, next pre uh, the net present value attainable by full deployment is estimated to be billions of pounds. Some examples of potential such early demonstration areas include balancing electricity grids, supply chain management, clinical trial optimization, 5G beam, beam forming sub-channel location for mobile te tele telecommunication networks. Right? So this is a, a very kind of ambitious, ambitious program, which I think is, is, is related. It's, it's also kind of harnessing the, the research strength that the UK has but I think Europe has a very similar research strength. So I think this, these are the kinds of areas that, that we should be investing in. So safe and trustworthy, just a few words about safe and trustworthiness. Um, I don't really want to go too much into depth here. I think we all know why it's important to be safe and trustworthy. Um, as we know, AI is already being used in high stakes applications like educational attainment, access to credit and so forth. Um, and in, a, in the future, this will only become uh, sort of more critical, more safety critical, and therefore it's important for us to, to, be, able to, to be able to ensure that these, these, um, these systems are safe and are trusted by the population. Um, and this is especially in the Estonian context, right? So we, we saw, you know, Estonia prides itself on, on being um, very proactive in adapting technology, in the, especially in the public sector, but also, as, as we know, um, 
in the startup space, etc. So it's a very sort of um, you know tech savvy nation. Um, but you know we don't want to we want to make sure that this happens in a responsible way, right? So this is a, Estonia is a good place for for this kind of for this kind of research. So trustworthiness, uh, we've we've I mean we've we've heard a lot of these words like trustworthiness, correctness, security, ethical deployment. Well, I think trustworthiness for me is really uh, is really a, an intersection of these three things. So correctness is really about um, making sure about you know being able to measure accuracy, being able to measure robustness, being able to measure risk um, and verify performance, offer guarantees about performance. Okay? Security is all about sort of cybersecurity and the new challenges um, that AI poses for cybersecurity. And responsible deployment is about the ethical dimension, right? So since human beings, human beings are involved, human beings are affected, AI poses brand new challenges, you know, things like new ways of, um, of uh, challenging our notions of fairness, of discrimination. So I think those three things together um, are crucial for this concept of trustworthiness, right? This, what it means to, trust, to be trustworthy for these systems now and in the future is that we ensure that all three of these um, concerns are, are met. So I want to now get a little bit more technical. Um, approximately, uh, where's, where did I go? Where's my moderator? How much, how much time do I have? I would say five minutes. Five minutes, OK. <laughs> uh, OK, maybe I, I don't really want to get into too much technical detail here. I wanted to, get, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the state of the arts and, and what the, the developers of the frontier model is actually doing to ensure safety at this, at this point in time. Um, so there, there are things that, that are called EVAs, there are called, things called red teaming, all part of this idea of reinforcement learning for human feedback. Um, so this is the way, you know, when sort of Google and, and OpenAI and, and, and Meta and Apple, whenever they come and, you know, shake the hand of the, of the local politician, um, they say, you know, we are very serious about safety, right? But any serious scientist will look at these techniques and be very skeptical, right? So there are, there are, there are reasons to be skeptical. Um, these kinds of things are not scalable. Um, if, they don't, you know, if they don't uncover any problems, we can't really have very much confidence in, in, in safety, right? There are many contexts in which these applications, these models can be used. Um, and, and moreover, the, because somehow the same hammer is, is always used to fill, fi fix the problem, right? It's, how do I make sure that neural networks are safe? Well, I'll build another neural network that's going to make, make sure it's safe. Um, there, there are kinds of underlying problems with the model, um, things called specification gaming reward hacking, which means that somehow these, these things are, are quite, quite flawed. Um, so I have a quote by one of the world's most famous AI scientists, uh, Joshua Bengio. He's a winner of the um, ACM Turing Award, which is like the Nobel Prize for computer science. Um, so he, had a, he has a very nice blog. I encourage you to, to read his blog. Um, and in a post last year, he wrote, unlike methods to build bridges, drugs, or nuclear plants, current approaches to train frontier AI systems, the most capable AI systems currently in existence, do not allow us to obtain quantitative safety guarantees of any kind. Okay, so we, we have really no confidence about this. Um, so I think this is where we can come in. I think this is where there is a, a fundamental challenge um, and I think we, this is something where we can make a contribution. And in particular, um, I want to focus on, okay, I don't have really have very much time, but let, let me just tell you what the kind of core scientific challenge for me is thinking about correctness. Okay, and, and this is really about um, the fact that AI is all about probability, right? So the way the underlying technology works is very probabilistic. Um, but much of the work in computer science up to this point, you know, computer science is a fairly young discipline. I mean, it was born some, somewhere maybe around the 30s or 40s of the last century. But it's really been heavily influenced by 20th century mathematical logic. So it's all about zero, one, true or false, yes or no. Um, but AI is probabilistic and human beings, at least at the moment, do not do very well with probabilistic reasoning. There are many paradoxes, counterintuitive observations, 
Just yesterday, uh, my colleague Bart Jacobs was telling me that he came up with a, with a riddle that, that puzzles even sort of the experts in the area, right? So, so there's, there's still th things that we're unsure of at the very fundamental, no there's fundamental notions of probabilistic reasoning that are, that are quite challenging. Um, so probabilistic programming and probabilistic verification are currently hot topics. And this is really where Europe are leaders, right? So we have absolutely top European um, research and probabilistic programming, program, pro probabilistic verification. Um, and, and, uh, and this is one, one area where I think research at XTI can really make a significant contribution. Um, so I'm out of time, so I'm just going to say that there is ex extremely exciting work going on in, in Nijmegen, which um, we've also contributed to at, at Taltech, and at, at Munich there is a very important um, center for verifying existing neural networks at a lower level. So I think combining these kinds of research strands, combining these experts, um, is, is a very exciting um, proposition from a scientific point of view. And I didn't mention here also, at Tartu we have, we have Melis, who's uh, an expert in reasoning about un uncertainty in AI. Um, he's going to be on the panel later. So I think the combination of these four universities is, is a very exciting proposition. I'm out of time, so I'm sorry. We're going to have to push the security and the ethical aspects to, to, to the discussions further. Um, but as I said, for me, this idea of trustworthiness is really a combination of these three. So let me just tell you a little bit about, this is my final slide. Um, let me tell you about uh, XDI. I'm not going to go into why Estonia, you've already heard this from Andres. Um, we have currently starting a, an exciting local thing called XI, Estonian Center of Excellence and AI. This is a pure, purely research, a research project in Estonia, which is going to um, fund research, fund several PIs who will work together on, on various um, research projects. Um, but XDAI is a bigger vision, right? So as, as, as you heard, it brings together these, these four universities um, with a complementary group of experts, bringing together people who you know, founded um, you know, absolutely seminal um, institutes for ethics and AI in Europe, bringing together people who serve on European expert groups at Radboud, people who really inform policy at, in the EU at the highest level. Um, and our vision is really to enable this interdisciplinary research to make AI safety engineering a reality, focusing on these three scientific areas. And I think for me personally, sort of the shining jewel in this, apart from the research, will be a top-level PhD school, right? So I think in Europe we have a problem that, um, as I said, there, there is this kind of a problem of brain drain in Europe um, in general, but I think focusing on these aspects in which we are strong in Europe and which we will have a high level of need for these skills in the future, I think we need to train the next generation of experts, right? And, and hosting this in Estonia and, and attracting, you know, the, the, the most talented students and for these students to then have access to these top-level experts from these four universities, I think this will be both an exciting proposition for students, but also something very, very important for Estonia in particular, and more, general, more generally for Europe. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say.